the sweetest, truest, and bravest boy at the FBI. Is that a rhetorical question? Not even a fair contest, really. Oh, you're the big dog around here, and they know it. <laughs> Do you remember when I first got my new digital camera? It was like living with a paparazzi. I was just practicing. Fortunately, Levi was a more willing model. Mm. When I saw this contest being sponsored by Bawa Yummies on the internet, where they were looking for service dogs to honor, I emailed them some photos of our handsome fella. You heard back? Levi was chosen as one of three service dogs of the year by Bow Wow Yummies, and he's gonna have his picture on a special limited edition dog food bag. They're sending out a professional photographer. That's great. It'll be like an athlete on a Wheaties box. First, your picture on a dog food bag, then commercials, television, movies. Levi, the new lassie. Everybody, we just got a call about a bank robbery in progress at City Savings. 2703 Lamont Avenue. Looks like a hostage situation. Taro, follow up with Metro PD on the way. They have some info on the suspect. Five after nine, a guy goes into the bank, claims he's a customer, and he says he wants to withdraw a million dollars. When the teller says she has to get the manager, the guy goes berserk. He starts screaming and yelling, pulls out a handgun, and puts a couple of rounds in the ceiling. Everyone hit the deck, and someone triggered the silent alarm. So you haven't established communication with the suspect? Well, we've tried, but so far, nothing. What about hostages? Best that we can tell, seven employees and six to eight customers. Well, this lovely day just keeps getting better. What's your tactical strategy? I got SWAT out the back looking for another way to get in through the second floor. We'll work on making contact. OK, but we're not waiting. We're going to take that lunatic out if we get a shot. Bank customer is a guy named Frank Mitchell. No prior arrests, no criminal record. And get this, he has four different accounts in that bank totaling just over $1.2 million. Why would a millionaire shoot up his own bank? All right, you're going to have to hold off your SWAT guys. We need some time. I don't care if he's Donald Trump. He's not blowing away hostages on my watch. Here he comes. Get your hands up, sir. Get your hands up where I can see them. I want to talk to him. Oh, yeah. Professional, single, not so much as a parking ticket on his record. Looks like he wasn't thinking too clearly. His uh, preliminary tox screen just came back. Methamphetamines, hallucinogenics, with a dash of opiates. This guy was a walk-in chemistry experiment. I'm guessing there's a skeleton or two in Mr. Clean's walk-in closet. Even so, there's nothing in his record that indicates he'd be the kind of guy who'd be high on three or four different kinds of street drugs. Maybe it wasn't actually three or four different drugs. Could be some new designer drug. 
Check with the local hospital. See if anybody else came in with a similar drug reaction. Also, put in a call to Metro PD. See if they got any intel on any new designer drug. Sue and I will check at his office, see if anybody knew about his drug use. We'll take his neighborhood. Yeah. They'll say he was a nice guy, kept to himself. It's always the quiet ones. I know this isn't easy. How is this possible? Do you know of anything going on with Mr. Mitchell that would have caused such unusual behavior? No. What about his personal life? No problems that I know of. Do you want to know what kind of guy I worked for? When I needed a new car, he co-signed on the loan for me. He sent flowers to my mother when she was in the hospital. The man I work for was not some crazy who robs banks and gets into shootouts with the police. Any problems with drugs and alcohol? No. He was responsible. Never missed a day of work. What about yesterday? Did you notice anything unusual? It was typical. He came in early, worked till after six, and then he went home. There's an entry in his calendar for yesterday. Iguana? The Iguana Lounge? It's a nightclub he would go to sometimes. Do you know if he was there last night? Yeah, he was here, partying upstairs in the VIP room with all his other high roller buddies. Can you describe partying? Uh, maybe you better talk to my boss. We're not here to cause you any trouble. We got a no drug policy here, but these young rich guys, they got the door, they get the drugs. And they had the privacy of the VIP room. Hey, I don't make the rules. What about last night? Okay, I can't be positive what your boy was doing, but I know for sure one of the other geniuses was flying on Fantasia. Fantasia? A new designer drug they're all into. This guy was feeling so good that apparently English had become his second language. You got a name? No. And he paid cash. But um, I can give you a description. Mitchell had it all. Tasteful Georgetown apartments. Superb 20th century art collection. Klein, Motherwell, de Kooning. All top rate stuff. Yeah, you should have seen this bloke's flat screen telly. It's like he owned his own sports bar. Neighbor said he was pleasant, quiet. It's always the quiet ones. Building manager never had a problem with him. So what are we missing here? Uh, a model citizen gets stoned out of his mind and holds up a bank where he has over a million dollars of his own money? Maybe it's a service issue. Maybe you got a computerized voice one time too many? I say we stick with the bad designer drug theory. Here we go. Got a name on the party boy who got tossed out of the Iguana Club last night, Jason Albright. Seemed he stumbled down the street to the Rainbow Room, where he took a swing at a bouncer when they wouldn't let him in. Party people are so much fun. They called the cops, who arrested him for being under the influence of a controlled substance. When his talk screen came back, guess what? Same cocktail as our bank robber. Who wants to pay a visit to our party boy down at Metro PD? Too late. He posted bail this morning, but you might try Brown and Stevens, though. He's a stockbroker there. FBI, you gotta be kidding me. Since when's it a federal offense to throw a punch at a bouncer? It isn't. You just happen to have taken the same drug another dag took who robbed a bank. And we reckon you bought the drug from the same dealer. Maybe at the, um, Iguana Club. Wouldn't that be a coincidence? You can either tell us now, or we can drop by once or twice a week for the next month or two. I'm not sure, but I think that might raise a few questions around the office water cooler. The FBI badges we like to flash sometimes have that effect. And again, why don't we just go have a chat with his superiors? Shorten the whole process. Yep. Don't exactly have the warm fuzzies for the clown who sold me the stuff. Told me it was supposed to be a mellow high, not whack me out of my skull. What's his name? Donovan Lester. Now that wasn't so hard, now was it? We're running a special today, mate. You call Mr. Lester and tell him you've got a couple of friends who'd like to meet him, and um, we won't feel the need to haul you out of here in front of all your colleagues. Good choice. You wouldn't want to damage that sterling reputation of yours.
Miles Dale, we worked together. How do you do? You didn't tell me you were bringing a friend? Well, Miles is cool. We go all the way back to Harvard. Ah, uh, those were the days. So what do you got for me? Actually, I'm a little short today. Hey, buddy. Don't leave because of me. I'm not your buddy. <sighs> Look, I don't want to mess things up here. Then get out of the car. Jason and I are going to go for a little drive. We'll be right back. Buddy? No problem. Pull ahead, hang a right of the next street. We're going around the block. <clears throat> Is that really necessary? You and your frat bro there may be as tight as Siegfried and Roy, but I don't know him. You, I know. You get the cash? Calling these beauties beyond Fantasia. You'll be real happy. Call me anytime. We made the buy. Suspect is on foot, headed north on 23rd Street. Oh, watch where you're going. Hey, hey! Folks. Hey, want a life's little lessons. Take drugs, it's hazardous to your health. Sell drugs, it's hazardous to your freedom. Hey, nice to see you again. Finished photographing him. He will be the most beautiful creature to ever grace a bag of Bow Wow yummies. So, what do we need for the shoot, Miss Mr. Milton? Like Madonna or Cher. Okay. Milton. Now, how many different outfits does Levi have? Did you say outfit? My Francis has a different outfit for every day of the month. But then she's all girl. Who's Francis? My dog. She's a real clothes horse dog. Now, what I'd like to do is take 20 or so different shots, different outfits, so we can play around a little bit, and then choose the best 13. 13? Uh, don't you just need one for the dog food bag? For that, yes. But I want to take 12 other shots with 12 different outfits for the calendar. Calendar? What do you mean? I have plans, ladies. If you trust Milton, he will take Levi into the stratosphere. Does he have anything clubby? What was the last word? He, he said, uh, clubby. No, he doesn't go to that many clubs. Not to worry. I have something he can wear. All right. Bring him to my studio tomorrow. Having the uh, keen instincts of the highly trained investigator that I am, do I detect a problem? You would not believe what happened at Lester's arraignment. Judge Morley and his liberal bench buddies must be having a contest to see who can kick a potential felon loose the quickest. I'm guessing we have a winner. Give the man a prize. However, all is not lost. Lester made bail. We had to get him back into court so we could get the bail revoked. Tara gave us just the ammunition we needed. I found out that Lester was wanted for questioning in a similar pattern of drug offenses in Boston. That was enough to get a new judge, one Lawrence McLean, to decide that Lester looked like a potential flight risk and allow us to drag him back into court for a new bail hearing. But he didn't show. You got a warrant? Judge McLean issued one on the spot. Tara, we're gonna need Lester's the... address? Way ahead of you. Jack, if you're looking for low-life Lester, you're out of luck. He's long gone. It's been a long time, Joe. How's the bounty hunting business treating you? We prefer bail recovery specialists. They're treating me just fine. I don't miss the uh, bureaucratic red tape of the Bureau one bit. You, on the other hand, I uh, think of quite often. It's OK. Let him go. I had that one coming.
so now we're even. That's the way you want to look at it. Funny how the important stuff sticks with you. Some days I can't find my keys, but I never forget my wedding, my daughter's birth, or the day you helped them railroad me out of the bureau. Not really the way I remember it, Joe. That's supposed to come as a surprise. What do you know about Lester? I know I'm going to find him before you do, because I'm better at this than you are. Nothing in the basement. Upstairs is clear. You ought to get a load of the decor in the master bedroom, though. Early American, ugly. How long have Joe and Jack known each other? They go back to when Jack first joined the Bureau. They worked together for a while. He was a loner, had his own way of doing things. Good agent, though. Tough, uncompromising. Kind of guy you'd want watching your back. That doesn't sound like the kind of guy who sucker punches an old partner. The sucker punch might have had more to do with the fact that Jack had something of a mutual admiration thing going with Joe's very attractive, very independent daughter. Young Jack was a bit of a heartbreaker in those days. Turned out for the best, though. Joe isn't exactly father-in-law of the year material. From what I hear, the guy was always a bit of a whack, Joe. Might have some agreement there. Get anything? Besides attitude? No. I don't think he knows any more than we do. Actually, I reckon we know more than him. Call was made about 20 minutes ago from the kitchen telephone. Did you run a crisscross? You're taking somebody other than Lester, and I'm guessing two things. You can't find Lester, and this guy's not real talkative. You learn anything? This is a federal investigation, Joe. Come on, Jack. One for old time's sake, huh? You got a free one on the porch, all right? Don't push your luck. I guess the game is on. It's not a game, Joe. Just another case. Not for me. This one's special. Gives me reason to get up in the morning. Sounds like a real full life. Don't worry about my life. My life's just fine. I hope you get all your merit badges. How are we doing? You guys are tough nut to crack. Good thing we got our best squirrels on it. Hmm. That. That was. A culinary delight. I wish we could have given you some, Todd. I mean, you've got to be hungry. He's got to be hungry. You would think. Forget the food, though. You don't start talking pretty soon, mate. We're going to have to stop being so friendly. Well, I already have all the friends I need. You either charge me with something, or I'm out of here. This guy's got to know something. Yeah, he's not going to give it up. Let's cut him loose and put SOG on him. Maybe he'll lead us to something. Look at Frances, Levi. See her grace and confidence emanating from her very core. Now, Levi, I don't expect you to be able to achieve Frances' level of natural inner expression. But just notice how she projects an air of accessibility that allows the camera lens in, that revels in her essence. Melchon, is this really necessary? Trust me, this is how a common dog learns to become a champion. Let's give it a try, Levi. Come on, baby. Let's get you down. Come on. Okay, big fella. Up you go. Let's see what you got. All right, Levi. Find the lens. It's all about you, Levi. All right, you're a cowboy. You're just off the dusty trail. Think rugged. 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 Yes, Levi, work it. Work it. Good, 
Levi. You've got the wind in your hair and the sea salt in your nostrils. Arr! Long John Levi. Yes, yes. Arr, arr. I think we got it. Did a pretty good job for a civilian, didn't he, baby doll? Sorry, Freddy. He's probably exhausted. It's grueling when you're not used to exposing your soul. I'm sure it can be. I like the gladiator. I don't know, you know, I, <laughs> I think the park ranger's pretty cute. Wasn't there one with just a scarf? That might be good. Yeah, you know, I think maybe Sue's right. After all, less is more. Right? Actually, it less is just less. I, but I think we should let Francis and Levi decide, since they are the key demographic. Where are they? Where's my Francis? Somebody left the door open. I'm sure they haven't gone far. Francis, what happened to you? Francis, oh my baby, are you all right? How dare you corrupt my precious little poopsie? Well, I'm not sure who's corrupting who. I mean, looks like maybe they were just looking to have some fun after a hard day's work. Like the rest of us, sometimes that can get you into trouble. This may be fun for a common canine like Levi, but it's nothing short of traumatic for my Francis. My Francis is a real lady and I will not have her corrupted by your kind. Well, at least you offered to give Francis a bath. I'd say that's more than generous under the circumstances. By the way Milton reacted, you'd have thought we'd offer to give him a bath. Does the term psychiatric checkup mean anything to you? Milton may be a little obsessed with Francis, but he's harmless. He calmed down before he left. Sounds like you may have just averted a crisis that uh, might have meant the premature end to Levi's nascent modeling career. It's the way it is in the uh, doggy dog world of modeling, mate. One day you're on top of it all, and the next day you're a has been. I'm just glad we don't have to deal with Milton's artistic temperament anymore. If this means Levi won't be gracing the pages of Milton's calendar, maybe it's for the best. Oh, it's okay, boy. I don't think Lassie ever did a calendar. <laughs> I just got word that Lester's pal, Todd Gable, the guy we picked up for questioning, was just found nearly beaten to death. I thought SIG was watching you. They were. Todd was home alone. They didn't see anybody else going to the apartment. And then Joe Wolf comes strolling out the front door like he owns the place. Our guys go in, and they found Todd. Well, why would Joe do that, then show him stuff? Because he wants us to know he did it. This whole thing is a big game to him, and he's showing us he's winning. Dad, we can protect you. Tell us what happened. We know Joe Wolf was at your apartment. I don't know what you're talking about. I fell down the stairs. It was an accident. Now, if you don't mind, I need the rest. You've become predictable in your old age. You need to find a new hangout. Can I get your dog a bone? Maybe a drink for you and your girlfriend? We won't be here that long. You mean this isn't a social visit? I'm disappointed. You want to be friends? Tell me what Lester's pal told you. You mean Todd? He didn't say anything to me. You hear he fell down a flight of stairs? Seemed a little clumsy. How'd you hurt your hand? I was baking cupcakes and I banged my knuckles on the ball. You crossed the line giving him a beating like that. You seem to forget. I don't have to play by your rules anymore. Careful, sweetheart. Lover boy here is a real heartbreaker. If he ever treats you wrong, you just let me know. I'd love a chance to straighten him out.
What was that all about? We had a falling out when I broke up with his daughter. Guess he still blames me for all her problems. What problems? We've been going out for a while. It's getting pretty serious. I found out she had started using cocaine. Never around me, I had no idea for the longest time. You think you know somebody so well. I tried to help her. It worked for a little while. She couldn't stop. Anyway, I had to finally just <clears throat> walk away. <sighs> that was a long time ago. Hey, any luck on Lester's whereabouts? But Tara's got something. Lester has a company called Diversified Commerce. Only trouble is there's no physical address, no description of what the company does, and it only has one officer. Donovan Lester. Heidi LaRue. Let's hope she's a better conversationalist than Todd Gable. <sighs> I've got a paperweight that's a better conversationalist than Todd Gable. Tara, I'd like to know everything Joe Wolf has been doing since he left the Bureau. Jobs, any kind of trouble anywhere. OK. Something else? See if you can track down Kristen Wolf. She's Joe's daughter. When was the last time you saw Donovan Lester? Last week sometime. Are you aware that harboring a fugitive is a federal offense? Wait. Wait a minute. Hold it right there! Keep your hands where we can see them and move toward us. I'm just the maintenance man in the building. You got any ID? What are you doing back there? Uh, routine maintenance. Get out of here. How do you reckon Lister would feel if he found out Hardy had a new boyfriend? Well, I can't imagine that wouldn't hurt his feelings. I don't care if he knows. We had a fight last week and he walked out. So there shouldn't be any reason why you wouldn't want to tell us where he is then. You might try uh, Tommy Telly's. He makes fake IDs for Lester. You have an address? There's a lawyer here to see us about Levi. In the heretofore mentioned complaint, the party of the first part, henceforth referred to as the plaintiff, demands punitive restitution from the party of the second part, henceforth referred to. Please, please, in English. My client, Milton, is suing the two of you for $10,000 for emotional distress caused by Francis's inability to perform at future dog shows. What? You must be kidding me. If only I were. Francis has been psychologically damaged to the point where she is unable to compete, and it has made Milton very distraught. This is ridiculous. We know a frivolous lawsuit with absolutely no merit when we see one. Lucky for me, you are not the judge who will be deciding this case. Well, lucky for you, the FBI didn't issue me a weapon. Tommy Tully. What's the not? Donovan Lester recommended you. Said you could help us out with a uh, specialized printing job. I do some custom work. Letterheads, business cards, wedding invitations. We were thinking of something a little more personal. What's more personal than a wedding? We just want ideas like you make for Lester. <clears throat> I'm afraid I don't know what you gentlemen are talking about. Oh, come on, Tommy. You know what an idea looks like, mate. Show him, Miles. It's impressive, isn't it? That's probably because it's real. We're not interested in your little operation, Tommy. All we want to know is where we might find Lester. I don't know. He just comes by sometimes. When he's not here, I don't know where he is. And maybe you can tell us about the phony IDs you make for him. You owe us an explanation, Mr. Milton. I beg your pardon? How can you sue us just because your stupid dog had a good time in some garbage? I dropped the lawsuit. And I would appreciate it if uh, you didn't call Francis stupid. Matchin? 
Are you all right? First, let me apologize. That wasn't me. I'm not a sewer. I never was. Well, there was that time when I first entered the police academy, but the academy had it coming. Anyway, that's it's ancient history. Water under the bridge. Melchon, why don't you tell us what's going on? Call me. I borrowed money from my brother for a nose job for Francis. No, it's true. Francis has had rhinoplasty. But if you ever mention it outside this room, I'll deny it. Dogs have nose jobs? It was for a deviated septum. It's not like she had elective surgery to satisfy her vanity. Anyway, last week, out of the blue, my brother asked for his money back right now. I said, well, it'll take me time to get that kind of money together. He says, fine. Then I'm going to take Francis as collateral. He took Francis? You can see why I was so desperate. During a moment of weakness, I, I decided that the only way that I could get this money to get Francis back would be, be by suing you. Of course, I realized that taking it out on you was all wrong, so I canceled the lawsuit. Now I don't know what to do. By the time I, I, I can raise that kind of money, Francis won't even remember who I am. This guy was in the police academy. I just had a long conversation with Milton's brother, Rodney. Any luck smoothing things over between them? Apparently, there's a lot more wrinkles there than can be ironed out with just one phone call, but I have an idea that I'm going to need your help with. I found out some information on Kristen Wolf. You got a contact number on her? I'm sorry, Jack. She died four years ago from a drug overdose. I also found, as you might expect, her death had a big effect on Joe. Over the past four years, he's been involved in five kills while trying to apprehend a fugitive. And in every case, a gun was found on the victim and he claimed it was self-defense. And they were all wanted for drug dealing. Like Lester. Joe's not out to catch him. He's out to kill him. In each case, Joe was cleared of any wrongdoing. But why hasn't it all raised a red flag with anybody? We only found it because we cross-referenced every name he collected a bounty on and then ran those names through NCIC. One-man army in the war on drugs. All to avenge the death of his daughter. And that's not all. The guy who was charged with selling Kristen the drug she overdosed on was found in an alley three months later in Baltimore with a slug in his head. Apparently, somebody didn't trust the judicial system. I just got a call. There's been a hit on one of Lester's fake credit cards. Bill Haddock, AKA Donovan Lester, just rented a car from the budget office at 237 Colfax. This is one for the books. Two visits by the FBI in one day. What does this other agent look like? Around 50, tough looking. Was he asking about Bill Haddock's rental agreement? You guys don't miss a thing. Can I see the rental form you filled out? Like I told the other guy, I can give you a copy, but I got to keep the original. What do we got? Royal Sutton downtown. Joe's ahead of us. Bobby, D, take the back. Miles, let's take the front. Jack, there he is. Stay here. Drop it, Joe! Stop it right there! I'll shoot him, Jack. You know I'll do it. It's over, Joe. That's yet it isn't. Come on, Joe, there's no way out of here. You're wrong. There's always a way out. You just can't be afraid to make the tough decisions. That's why I want you to make the right decision. For your own sake. <laughs> you don't care about me. This is just another case for you, remember? You said it yourself. Jack, I got this. Now let me do my job, Joe. 
Let him go and we'll deal with him. He can't. Too many restrictions, too many liberal judges. How's the war on drugs going, huh? You winning it yet? We're doing our best. Not good enough, Jack. But that's okay. Gives me reason to get up in the morning. That's all I got. Making the world better by eliminating scum like him. You can't do this, Joe. This isn't what Chrissy would want. Don't you dare speak her name. Not after what you did to her. Hey, I cared about her. You walked out on her. I may have failed, but I tried to help her. But I couldn't, Joe, you know that. Nobody could. We found her in an alley just like this. She weighed 90 pounds. I'm sorry, Joe. I loved her too. Killing him is not gonna fill the hole that you got in your life now. Yeah, it's over. I'm gonna ask you for your gun, Joe. You either holster it, drop it on the ground. You heard him? Drop the gun! Easy, Bobby, I got it. You're right, Jack. It's over. That was a stupid thing you do. He could have shot you. He wasn't going to shoot anybody but himself. I couldn't let him do that. He took my dog. He stole my money. I didn't steal it. I borrowed it. Have you paid it back? No. I rest my case. OK, that's it. I've had enough of you two. Now, I think we all know this is about a little more than a dog and an unpaid loan. So, why don't we get to what it really is? You're brothers. You may have had your differences, but you're still family. He ruined my life. You gotta bring that up again. Now we're getting somewhere. You're a successful accountant. How did he ruin your life? I didn't want to be an accountant. I wanted to be a policeman. To, to wear the uniform and carry the badge. So what happened? He killed my dream. I did not. You're such a whiner. You're the one who sued the police because you got thrown out for cheating. I didn't cheat. They defamed me. They said I cheated, but I didn't. So I sued them. And lost. You can imagine how that enhanced my reputation once they found out I was his brother. They didn't even give me a chance. I was damaged goods. And so was my dream to serve and protect. What if we could find a way for you to serve and protect now? There's an opening at the FBI? No, no. But we have a friend who's one of the leaders of the police reserve. That's right, Chuck Seaver. Yeah, well, I'm sure they wouldn't have me with the reputation he gave me. But you have no idea what a recommendation from the FBI can do, which we might be inclined to do if you give Milton his dog back. What about my money? How about a payment plan? We might be able to work that out. Good. Looks like we have a deal. Is there anything else that either of you would like to say? How's my little girl? Frankly, I'll be glad to get rid of her. You'd think a $3,000 nose job would have at least fixed that snoring. Hey, what's going on? Levi was worried about you. He couldn't wait till we got to work. He wanted to talk to you before everyone else was around. And somehow he knew that I'd jog in the morning. He knows stuff. Well, I wouldn't want him to worry. I'm OK. <gasps> Did you visit Joe in the hospital? Yeah, I tried to talk to him. I don't think he's ready for that yet. I don't know what happened between you and Kristen. 
But I do know there's a whole building full of people at work that will say, Jack Hudson is the guy you want in your corner if you're in a tough place. Well, I guess I could buy Levi a latte since he did get up early and come all the way over here. What do you say, boy? Does that sound okay? No! He wants to know if they have chicken flavor. Come on. Hey, uh... You want to catch the Wizards' Knicks game tonight? Sorry, mate. It's already have tickets. Yeah, I know. I was hoping you'd invite me. Righto. Uh, you will spring in for dinner. Deal. Steak in a game. Doesn't get better than that. Well, who said anything about steak? <laughs> Greetings. I thought you'd like to see the finished product. Oh, he's not all dressed up? No, they decided to go in a different direction. Some people have no creative vision. I think it looks great. <laughs> Levi likes it too. Speaking of different direction, unfortunately, Levi will not be gracing the pages of my most exquisite calendar. Oh, why is that? Don't get me wrong. I think Levi is very talented for a beginner, but I decided the calendar needed a hook, something that says hip, now, today. So I went to the Big Apple for inspiration. And by the look on your face, I'm guessing you found it. Did I ever? What is huge on Broadway this year? Kirstie Alley? No, no. Classic Broadway revivals. Aren't those always big? Yes, because they're timeless. So I decided to produce a calendar featuring Francis as famous characters from the New York stage. I call it Bulldogs Over Broadway. Here she is as Annie. <laughs> Dorothy from The Wiz. <laughs> and a very energetic Peter Pan. Of course. Looks like Francis is more interested in doing Sleeping Beauty. Oh, poor baby. She's just exhausted. She was up every night with me editing the calendar. And I think maybe she found her friends charming. Oh. 